A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. On leaving the synagogue, Jesus entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Simon's mother-in-law lay sick with a fever. They immediately told him about her. He approached, grabbed her by the hand, and helped her up. Then the fever left her, and she waited on them. When it was evening after sunset, they brought to him all who were ill or possessed by demons. The whole town was gathered at the door. He cured many who were sick with various diseases, and he drove out many demons, not permitting them to speak because they knew him. Rising very early before dawn, he left and went off to a deserted place where he prayed. Simon and those who were with him pursued him, and on finding him said, everyone is looking for you. He told them, let us go on to the nearby villages that I may preach there also. For this purpose have I come. So he went into their synagogues, preaching and driving out demons throughout the whole of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. The amount of suffering and demon possession in today's readings seems so pervasive and so surreal, I feel, if, feel as if I'm caught in a Monty Python film. Job surmises that all of life is a drudgery and he will never, ever, ever, ever see happiness again. In the Gospel, we are told that the people of Capernaum brought to Jesus' door all who were ill or possessed, and soon the whole town was gathered at the door. The inference has to be that every single inhabitant of Capernaum was either ill or possessed or both. And lastly, we are told that Jesus was driving out demons throughout the whole of Galilee. Galilee must have been a frightening place to live, all those demons. And it's good that we can find some humor here because for an entire year now, we have lived with COVID-19 and its effects. Illness, death, separation, and isolation, increased cases of physical abuse and violence, cancellations, unemployment, grief, powerlessness. The whole world does in fact have cause for echoing Job's lament. It feels as if the demons and possessed of Galilee do surround us. In contrast, the Gospel of Mark places Jesus before us as an unstoppable healer and the first to be cured of all people is Simon Peter's mother-in-law who remains nameless to us in contrast to Job. And unlike Job, the once wealthy and influential, Simon Peter's mother-in-law is just a senior citizen with a fever. 
But Mark tells us that Jesus took her by the hand and raised her up. Significantly the same word in the very same verb that is used to describe Jesus' own resurrection. The next sentence tells us that her response was to get up and wait on them. And some find this aggravating and even sexist, as if the very motive to heal her was simply to have her wait on them. And that's the error people make when they read a first century story from a 21st century perspective. We have to read the story as if we are standing in the first century. And from that first century perspective, Jesus is healing here and throughout the gospel involves restoring people who were cut off from their community and allowing them to again go back to have their full role in that community. Those who have been seriously ill together with their loved ones in our own day can readily understand the joy of simply coming back to be a participant in the community. In fact, it seems like the first thing we forget when we are well and the first thing we realize when we are ill is that there is nothing ordinary about being able to participate in the life of the community. Mark's gospel invites us to look for everyday resurrections in the life of our family, as well as in the social and political order. A debilitating fever is the equivalent to death if one cannot do what it is human to do, to provide for, to feed another, to serve another, to be released from illness and to be stored to oneself means being able to fulfill one's responsibilities to others. It is significant that in the Gospel of Mark, which is filled with stories of healing, there is not a single healing done for the sake of the individual. Healing always takes place in this Gospel to repair relationships, to bring someone back to their community. May we too find healing in the one who takes us by the hand and raises us up.